Hi everybody, it is Robert Earl out here at the Eco Ranch Sustainable Living Educational Center in Far West Texas, along with Eco the Eco Watchdog. Still haven't figured out how to open these videos up. But um, I'll tell you what, I have a project I was going to put in a vlog, but why don't we do a separate video on it? It might be uh, kind of of interest to some of you folks. And it's, it's a how-to that um, I feel confident in actually doing a how-to. We're going to take a slab of um, Looter's limestone. I'll show you the slab in a minute. And we're going to, we're going to cut it and make two um, countertops, two vanity tops, for the bathrooms in the bathhouse at the campground. So if I, once I get this alligator to stop chomping on me, we'll get underway. Alright guys, the West Texas wind is going like crazy, so I'm not sure how well this is coming out. I'm going to yell at you as I do this. I like the fact that it's a windy day to do this because it does blow the dust away. Uh, the wind's coming through because we've got a cold front, if you want to call it dropping from 108 to 98, a cold front. But I'm sitting here on my slab. Now what I, what I have here, uh, these are some premium slabs of one inch thick looters limestone called looter stone now for, for quite a while a lot of the McMansions were really using looter stone and everything they could and they were paying big bucks uh, and when I say big bucks they were paying something in the neighborhood of 50 to 75 dollars a square foot for the, these slabs now I bought the slabs we did a lot of business with looters limestone the company I worked for and so I was able to get miscuts. This was accidentally stuck in miscuts because of the broken corner right here. And it isn't a miscut at all. This is some premium one inch thick mocha limestone. It is absolutely going to be gorgeous finished and you're gonna go through the whole process with me on this video. So what I've got here is I've got a 40 inch wide by 48 inch deep, I guess. Anyway, 40 by 48 inch slab. I'm going to make two countertops out of it, two vanity tops. One vanity top is going to be simply 20 by 48, so I can put a double sink in it uh, to give the campers something to wash clothes in or whatever they want to do. The other one is uh, it's going in the thinner built, uh, the thinner bathroom, the one I showed in my previous vlog. It has to be uh, 20 inches for the for the um, sink, but I'm going to taper it back a little bit. I'm going to cut the sink hole in just the one, and we're going to polish it. Just walk you through all the steps, but for right now, let me get up. You can see I've got my line here, and what I'm going to do is simply cut on the line. I've got a diamond blade on my circular saw. It's going to be a dry cut. It doesn't need to be a precision cut. So I can do a dry cut, and I'll start that right now. I've got my gloves and my safety glasses. If, um, if it wasn't so windy, I would need, in addition to the safety glasses, I need my respirator. We're going to have the dust blown right away from me, as you'll see as I start to cut here. each side so that when it did break it was a pretty it was a nice clean break next step now is to get my sink and draw the and draw the circle to make my cutout for the sink well in making that cut something happened that can happen to any piece of stone at any time no matter how careful you are and that's this corner came off now sometimes that would mean that the, the piece is totally unusable for this project but maybe not for another one in this case, I'm just going to kind of taper a curve here and a curve here so it looks like I meant to do that. Then we're going to be tapering this cut, this break out here. So the sink, the template for the sink is going to be right here. What I have here is a sink someone gave me. 
Um, I got curious when I was looking at it because it did look rather old except for the fact that it had a piece of chrome in here on the overflow. So it, it couldn't be turn of the century, turn of the 20th century. I got curious and it's marked on the back Kohler with a model number and I actually called Kohler. They could come up with the model number and but they couldn't come up with the year that it was uh, built. Uh, the closest we could come up with, mainly because of the chrome, was post-World War II, so somewhere around 1945 to, let's say, 55. Still a grand old age, solid cast iron sink, and we're going to reuse it. Someone gave it to me, so we're going to reuse it. We're not going to repurpose it, because the purpose is still as a sink. So we're going to put it here. about right but it is going to be very weak I have to trace around here then trace in it looks like three quarters of an inch I'll get a measurement ordinarily you would use a scribe or a compass and just scribe around it we've looked everywhere and can't find my scribes so I'm going to go ahead and just carry it an inch in uh, visually or three quarters of an inch in to be safe and then it'll be a drop-in sink so it'll just drop right into this slab if I don't break the slab as I cut we won't know that until we actually do the cutting. Well guys, the wind is still with us. Um, I came inside uh, into the garage mainly because that sun and the heat is brutal. It's 98 degrees only, but it's just brutal out there. So I thought I'd come in here and do my cuts. Now, <clears throat> the only tools I have to make these cuts with is I've got the circular saw, which is only a straight line, and I have my sawzall, which is a reciprocating saw, and some masonry blades. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make a cut in here with the circular saw so that I and I'm going to make enough cuts to create a notch for me to get the reciprocating saw in the sawzall and come around here and cut. The odds are it's going to break. Uh, and if you're seeing this, it didn't break too bad and I'm able to put it together and use it. Uh, but if you're not seeing this, then I don't need to say anymore. But we're going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and cut it and hope that the reciprocating saw doesn't break it, the saw's all up and down motion. I've got blocks underneath it. I'm going to go ahead and make my cuts here where it's the thickest and then try to bring the saws all around in a circle and we will see what happens in a couple minutes. Okay, here's my starting point. I've got the circle mar marked out. I just have to go ahead and somehow get the cut made if it'll make. Again, the odds are it'll break, but uh, then I'll just do it with plywood and linoleum. Uh, which is a good backup, but I'd like to try to do it this way because I, I need to work with this one inch material I've got quite I've got a bit of it uh, That I want to do a vanity in the uh, in our house for so this is good practice now Before I start somewhere out there. There's a guy sitting in his mother's basement eating a ham sandwich Who's going to be tempted to make the comment listen? Why didn't you use the DCN number 17? Uh, CNC laser guided saw by uber pricey to make this cut. Next time I would do that. Well, great. If you think I should have that thing, by all means, the donate button's in that upper corner on the main pan channel page. Go ahead and send me the cost of the Uber Pricey uh, CNC machine with a note saying that's what you want me to buy with the money you send, and I'll go ahead and buy one and I'll do a video special using the tool that you donated to me uh, to make the cut. Uh, because I can't afford that tool and this is all I can afford so we're going to try to do it with what I can afford and with what I can afford is what 98% of my viewers can afford so let's give it a shot eh? It's cutting for the moment. Now, whether it breaks or not, it's a different story. Not going to make you watch me cut it. I'm going to go ahead and cut through it, and uh, well, we'll just cross our fingers. Well, guys, the slab didn't break, and there's the sink rough fitted in. I even was able to make out of the cutout there a little tail 
to fit all the way, I think all the way to the wall. I haven't measured yet. It's, it's probably too long and I'll cut a little bit off. So the next step is to start the polishing. And I know that's probably more what a lot of you would like to see is the polishing. Uh, and I'm gonna bullnose it along the edge. I'm gonna bullnose the edge and then start polishing. And we'll get to that, uh, well, in the next scene. Well, now that I've got it cut out, I'm ready to uh, I'm re ready to start polishing. What I did was I took my grinder, my dry grinder. This is not the dry grinder, my dry grinder, and um, I have a uh, I have a piece of diamond. Um, well, it's it's kind of a buffer. It, it, it's not really a buffer, but it'll it, it'll take a lot of material off. But it's diamond encrusted, uh, diamond in, uh, metal, bleh, metal with diamond embedded in it. And I bullnosed all around the edges and the, where I had to do that cut. I'm going to get behind it real quick. So now earlier where I showed you that it chipped as I was cutting it, I just took and cut it uh, in, a, in, a, in a corner and bullnosed that. Now we're not going to bullnose the back because that goes up against the wall, but the bullnosing goes all the way around here, this edge, this edge, and then I just kind of freehanded it to here. Uh, this is at 48 inches, and I can make a seam where this edge attaches to that edge. They're the same thickness, and then runs all the way to the end of the, um, almost to the edge of the wall. I think I'm four inches from the edge of the wall, so that that sharp corner can go actually right up again, right up there. It should look nice. What I'm going to do now that I've got the bulldozing is I'm going to take a 50 grit with my wet polisher. And you can see the uh, marks, <coughs> pardon me, it's dust in my throat. You can see the marks where as I was bullnosing, it um, bounced, bounced a little, and that's normal, it does bounce. But we're going to take, I have an old number 50 grit. <coughs> <coughs> that I'm going to take and use the old one, because that will probably tear it up. And uh, take those take those marks out, and then I'm going to uh, uh, use the 50 grit on this. Now let me get back behind the camera, uh, back from in behind the camera. This is a wet polishing system. You can see I've got the water hose here. Water comes out the center here, and I can adjust how much water comes out. I also have <clears throat> I also have different thicknesses of diamond embedded um, uh, rubber pads, essentially. And um, they can go up in, in grit to, I believe the highest I have is 16,000, might be 18,000, right in there. Now that's like a mirror finish. So it starts at 50, and this is the old 50 I'm going to use just to do the bullnosing. Then I'm going to switch to a newer 50 to do the whole top with. Then it doubles from, then it doubles from there. So you've got 50, 100, 200, 400, 800, 1600, 3000, 6000. 6000 will give me pretty close to a mirror finish. It is, after all, essentially an outhouse in a campground. So I'm going to get started with that. I'm going to let you see me start, but I'm going to move you back a bit because I don't want to splatter um, the camera. All right, I've pulled the, uh, pulled the edge out because that's all we're working on is the edge right here. Uh, I've got a 55 gallon drum with a couple of cinder blocks in it, piece of plywood, and this. I was going to wear my underwear, but I can't really film me in my underwear or <laughs> nobody would watch it. So uh, let me get uh, turn the water on and we'll get started. I'll show you just kind of how it starts. I won't show you the whole process. I'll come back when I'm about halfway done and then show you the finished product. But you saw how dull and the etching in this surface, and you're going to watch how this goes away. So here comes my water. I don't want a ton of water yet. I'm going to want more water when I get to the higher grits. And I just am going to take and wet the, um, wet the surface down. Again, remember, we're just wor working on the bullnosing edge. Just enough to start it with. Make sure my power cord is out of the way. This does not have a um, uh, ground fault interrupter. And the speed is variable on this. I'm going to turn it on. Want it a little slower for the 50 grit. Take 
this thing to about, uh, well, let's see, 4 or 8. I'll take it to 800 and come back and show you. But there's no sense in filming me going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I will say that on this little piece, each grit is going to take me about 10 minutes just on the top. It's going to take longer to do the bullnosing right now. So um, let me get to about get to 800 and then come back and show you. Well, I've run the polishing discs from 50 all the way up to 800, so I've done the 800 already. That leaves me with the 1500, the 3000, and the 6000, but I thought I'd show you the, the difference in, uh, in, in the piece because it's really quite, um, quite stunning. It, uh, 800 is about where a lot of people would stop because you just really don't need uh, to polish it that much more generally. I'm going to do it because I have the discs. But what it does is it brings out all the inclusions in the natural stone, including flaws like this one down here. It's a little black spot, and I'll, I'll do a close-up. In fact, let me get behind the camera. So I'm about to go ahead with the other three, but here's the bull-nosed edge. Now, you remember you could see all those grooves and, um, you know, it kind of gouges in it. Now, they're all gone. They're all smoothed out. That's an inclusion in the natural stone. That's an inclusion there. I've got the bull nosing done, and it really would shine if I went ahead and wetted it down. You'd see the shine, and of course, if I seal it, it'll, uh, it'll have the shine. Now, I'm going to go ahead and do the last three. These are the ones that um, are the least abrasive. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, do the last three polishes. They take more water, but they do, um, like I said, less abrasive. They'll bring the mirror finish up, and... Um, then I'm going to go ahead and install it without sealing it, and I'll seal it after I've done the installation. Because if I don't, if I just uh, do, if I just finish the video with the last three um, discs, everybody will say, "Well, I want to know what it looks like," and I don't blame you. So let me go ahead and finish it. So it's polished. We're completely done. Ready to? Uh, well, it should be sealed. I don't have the sealer handy, so I'm going to install it and seal it after it's installed. Let me show you a close up of it. Now, there you go. Look at the bull nosing. Huge difference from when we started. Now remember what we started with. Just go back to the beginning of this. And what we started with was just a, just a, a 20 by um, 48 piece of um, limestone, raw limestone. And now what we have is a mirror polish on a countertop or a vanity top. All right, let's go install it. Okay guys, it's finished and it's installed and I'm gonna get behind the camera and talk to you and show it to you. Okay, here's the completed countertop making its little teardrop shape coming out. Just very simple. with the, uh, the vintage Kohler sink. And the neat thing about this is how simple it was to do. With the right tools, it's not that hard. It does take a little bit of time. But I've been, um, oh, I think a day and a half is all it took to get it completely ready and, and to take it from where I sh you saw me with the, the slab that had to be cut. To where we are right now the only thing left for me to do is to seal it and i don't have the sealant right now and i didn't want to make you know it might be a week and i didn't want to wait that long it's all that's left to do and sealing it takes literally five minutes so we're done there's about three square feet of countertop there that particular uh piece of mocha limestone out of the looters quarry near abilene texas looters texas that particular piece would run you if you were to buy it, uh, you know, pre-made as a countertop, anywhere from seventy-five to one hundred and fifty dollars a square foot. So you're just using a hundred square, I mean, a hundred dollars a square foot. You figure it's three hundred bucks retail to buy what you just saw in there. I paid twelve bucks for it. These are the kind of things I love to do and the kind of things I love to show you how to do. I hope you've enjoyed seeing how to polish um, a stone. Essentially, polish a countertop out of just rough, raw stone. I had fun doing it. I love it. Uh, 
it it looks great to me to my eyes it looks great the sink itself is about 75 years old uh, and that's it so uh, there's other videos where I've done things similar to this if you're new to the channel take a look at some of the videos if you feel like it and until next time it's Robert Earl out here at the Eco Ranch Sustainable Living Educational Center in far west Texas saying see you later